Hey everyone, welcome to my Watercolor Friday series. Today we're going to discuss interesting mixes and they're going to be about six different mixes. And as you can see, I have already prepared my watercolor tubes and squeezed them out into five different um, trays. So I divided these kind of groups of three into five different groups and essentially put them together. So what is interesting mix? Now there's loads of different ways of achieving interesting mixes in my view, but this is one of my favorite, which is granulating and pigment separating mixes. So for that, I would suggest you go through your stash and pull out those watercolors that are highly granulating. So typically that would be cobalt turquoise and um, also things like ultramarine blue and various other colors as well. Let's talk about the different groups that I put the colors into. So the first color group is essentially about color. So the vibrancy and the tone. When you think about granulating or pigment separating colors, you certainly need to have a vibrancy of a pigment coming through and connecting with that pigment granulation. So to do that, you would need vibrant, bright colors. If you do that with slightly more muted colors, then the effect is still beautiful, just not as vibrant. So I'm giving myself a kind of wide range of mixes that I can create. And so for the colors, I picked Core, Quinacridone Red, Core Transparent Pyral Orange, and also I went for the moss green, which is not so much vibrant, but it is a color and it's also quite interesting. So this is the Michael Harding one. For the second color group, I went with super granulating colors and also colors that have like a pigment separation in them already. So once you use those in mixes, they will only add on that interesting aspect. So in that color group we have, um, well originally I put Glacier Black in there but then I swapped it with Sodalite Genuine by Daniel Smith. So Daniel Smith, Sodalite Genuine, my own, I don't want to create Strawberry Velvet by the way, my own watercolors are available on my website. I don't want to create so when you go there uh, to the online shop. Right, so the next color would be Schminke Glacier Turquoise. So all of those three colors are essentially pre-mixed for you and they have some interesting granulation and pigment separation already happening. Also with Glacier Turquoise, I'd say it's probably the most um, semi-opaque color out of all of them. Most of them are transparent or semi-transparent and the Glacier Turquoise has a little bit of a milky look to it. Then we have the third group and that would be the group that is quite granulating but also considering the color. The color itself I use often in my mixes, some of my favorite mixes. So here we have Schminke Meridian, Windsor Newton Cobalt Turquoise and Daniel Smith transparent red oxide. By the way, if you wonder why I'm talking separate to my hands movement is because unfortunately the mic didn't want to participate in recording and so I have to do a voiceover now. I hope you don't mind. And then we have the third color group which is Pretty much the burnt siennas. We've got Schminke transparent sienna which in the end I didn't end up using. Then we have Schminke maroon brown which is sort of like transparent sienna just with a little twist. It has an interesting pigment separation as well. And then we have Rembrandt, Rembrandt burnt sienna which is an affordable burnt sienna. Great for mixes. It's a little bit more subtle not as vibrant as the others but like I said it's it's um, 
quite affordable and a great color to have in your stash if you are using burnt sienna quite often especially if you want to practice mixing color that's a good one to have and then we have the final the fifth group which is daniel smith luna black now that's probably the most intense pigmented and saturated and granulated black that i own is really interesting in mixes and then we have Schminke Mars Black, which I also didn't end up using. And actually Rembrandt Burnt Sienna, I didn't end up using those three colors. Finally, the third color, I moved the uh, Schminke Glacier Black. So the one on the swatches on the top is the Glacier Black and the one at the bottom is Sodalite Genuine. So I swapped those two uh, when I was squeezing out the... Um, the paints so I am now going to start picking out two different colors for each mix and hopefully we can create some lovely mixes the journal I'm using is the visual journal by Strathmore and if you remember I did a number of tutorials and mixing videos before Daniel Smith's candle um, came out <laughs> and um, then I quit using Daniel Smith genuine Primatech colors but I do want to continue using them because I did pay money and they did cost me a lot of money back then and these days I don't spend that much money on art supplies I mean do you know many people who want to shop for art supplies that often as we did a few years ago I personally don't so yeah but i get to use those so the essence here is to focus on two colors that will bring out something in sort of like support each other and in combination you'll get a lovely color mix all right let's start with the swatching i'm just speeding up the swatching ever so slightly for you otherwise you'd probably fall asleep <laughs> Maybe not, but um, I think it's more fun to watch it. Right, so for the first mix, I have chosen Luna Black and Conacridon Red by Core. So Daniel Smith, Luna Black and Core, Conacridon Red. So both colors are actually quite intense. And by that, I mean they're not light colored colors. You will see what I mean later in a couple of the other swatches they're colors that you just can't get to look um, deeper like darker and they're always no matter how much you sort of load the pigment in there they always end up with a lighter value so here the value is quite dark to begin with and then you can lighten it but by, by adding more water and play around with it so essentially in this mix what i do enjoy is the fact that in the first few mixes you can get this heavy granulation from luna black and you have then the tint of it with the pink so you could do the same repeating all sorts of other bright colors think like a fire engine red like a vermilion type of color or um, you could try this as well with something like chartreuse and other colors that come to mind it would really work quite well with pretty much most colors so for the second color mix i consider the swatches and what we're going to have is windsor newton cobalt turquoise i picked windsor newton because that tube looked at me and smiled but jokes aside you can of course go ahead and pick any cobalt turquoise that you own cobalt teal sometimes it's called as well doesn't really matter they are all fairly similar except for if you're using them straight out of the tube then you could be quite particular but for mixes you will not notice much of a difference i promise you and i used the other end of the spectrum to be my own strawberry velvet like i said it already has some lovely uh, pigment mixed into there so basically you have that lovely taupey color from the potter's pink shine through 
and then you have the heavy granulation from cobalt turquoise so basically you will see the pigment separation throughout the entire range of swatches whether we are close to the cobalt turquoise spectrum or close to the strawberry velvet and both sides like throughout all the mixes will have some cobalt turquoise shine through and vice versa there's also the potter's pink coming through as well you can get a wide range with these colors these particular two colors and subsequently you can swap uh, the strawberry velvet for another kind of like a warm pink color but here it's a very timid kind of light color mix because strawberry velvet is not a dark color it's quite light ish by nature and so therefore you will get these lovely kind of almost peachy toned like dirty peaches which I personally find quite beautiful now we're going to go a few levels up in terms of color saturation not only because both of the colors that I'm using here are quite saturated to begin with but also because I will keep the water to a minimum so I've got Daniel Smith transparent red oxide on one end and Michael Harding moss green on the other end let's talk about transparent red oxide it's a very very granulating color by the way I think actually when I'm doing voiceover I can give you so much more info because when I'm talking and I'm working like swatching or painting I just I cannot do the two very well so I hope it's actually more informative that way for you so Transparent red oxide is a super granulating color and it's one of my favorite colors to use in all sorts of mixes. Here, of course, I'm giving you an example with this particular one color, but you can take this color and mix it with so many other colors. In my opinion, transparent red oxide is a must-have color to have in your palette. When looking at the swatches, the range is not very wide and the reason is because both of the colors have a lot of yellow in them so you're not going to go from one color to another and have a wide range of colors next mix is daniel smith sodalite genuine so it's a very dark super granulating and separating interesting very interesting color one of my favorites from daniel smith um, primatech range it has a blue undertone a cool blue undertone it's like almost like ultramarine blue is kind of driving trying to wave and say hi and then on the other side we have got core transparent viral orange super vibrant orange the most orange orange that I own it's like glowing off the page orange and therefore this color is a lot of fun to use in your granulating mixes because once the granulation starts to separate you then have these bright speckles of the orange coming through as early as second swatch in fact and um, yeah right there you can't probably see it just yet but once it all dries it starts to be more obvious another thing to mention about core it is um, it's got a patented ingredient in there which is aquasol and what it does it loves to push other colors so when you add it to another color it just pushes its way through so if you find a way to play with it and incorporate it into your watercolor techniques like for example wet into wet I will um, give you a demo um, in one of the upcoming videos then you will see how much more drama you can create in your swatches so here I'm going back and forth keeping the colors quite um, saturated so again not as much water because I wanted to show you a wide range going from lighter colors and sort of um, subtle colors to more vibrant colors and more um, more pigment load really is all it is versus water 
and yeah so this mix is also really really interesting you can approach this even with like opera pink for example uh, that would be a super bright color just not light fast but um, basically you need something that is glowing off the page vibrant and saturated and then you get a similar effect let's move on to the next mix and we've got schminke glacier black so it's more of a light color in this case it doesn't go very dark it's kind of like a gray and it has a little bit of blue in there so you can group it into grays or blacks uh, quite comfortably and the other color I'm using is Schminke Viridian so both Schminkes and both are um, that that kind of like a lighter value color so I'd say it's about medium not very dark um, not too light either so with this in mind as I mentioned before the mixes won't be too dark so you just naturally can't get them to look too dark if they already are mixed with two colors that are medium value so here also I couldn't get a very wide range between the colors so very quickly kind of in the middle I got back to Viridian pretty much the original so I had to then add a few more swatches going back to Glacier Black and um, that's the reason purely because I just couldn't stretch them out too much to create more variety in there um, one of the reasons like I said is because they're medium value and the other one is they're not too sort of contrasting like the orange and the uh, black or the blue and the pink so they're not on the opposite spectrums of the color wheel um, but nonetheless the mixes that I got are super beautiful they remind me of that moody sky during a thunder um, or perhaps a water that's in the river really beautiful textures really beautiful pigment separation as would pretty much all of these swatches that we had already so far and yeah I quite like that adding glacier black which is already a color that has a couple of pigments in there so it's interesting on its own but adding another color which is not too dark of a value you can then create more and more tints of it so you can stretch the colors more you could also try a more vibrant color as well you can do all sorts of things really so let's have a look at a close-up and the colors look super pretty some of my favorites are those kind of tinted grays with a little bit more of the viridian coming through so for the final color mix let's use Schminke Glacier Turquoise so that's the kind of like it comes across like it's a bit milky but it isn't really that opaque it probably has some opacity to it or more opacity than other colors so far however it's not a full-on kind of opaque color where there is white in there even though it may look a little bit like it but there isn't so for the other color I'm going to use a Schminke Maroon Brown that's also an interesting one it also has a pre-mixed kind of a look to it but I think it's actually a natural pigment so there's no pigment info on the uh, tube so here similar to I would say to the cobalt turquoise and strawberry velvet the similarity there is that this kind of like a turquoisey blue although this blue is more of a sunny beautiful blue sky type of a day um, color and then the you know the cobalt turquoise is obviously more turquoisey and then the strawberry velvet is kind of this sort of pinky color on the other side so they're quite sort of different colors and then here we have the maroon brown which is a 
uh, it's more deeper in value color than strawberry velvet although I have to say this strawberry velvet here the swatch is definitely much lighter than I kind of know the color to be I think maybe I used a bit more water than usual um, but nonetheless so maroon brown is more deeper in value and therefore we have sort of these again contrasting colors which will cancel each other out and if you want to mute a color down or if you want to neutralize it a little bit more that's what will happen if you pick two colors like a turquoise or a blue with a pink or a brown like a warm toned brown or a uh, kind of like a reddish orange type of color they will cancel each other out and neutralize each other so that means you'll get a nice range of colors big variety of different mixes and going from the muted turquoises to the beautiful browns and the turquoises here don't have the black from the cobalt black uh, the glacier black that we had just before just above it but otherwise super beautiful mixes and in a second we'll have a look at close-ups so let's recap on the swatches and the colors so daniel smith luna black and core quinacridon red that has given us some lovely lovely mixes so we're going from that beautiful bright quinacridone typical quinacridones are very vibrant and super transparent so you can get or kind of look through your stash and pick out quinacridone colors it could be any quinacridone color and try that mix and then in the next mix we have got winter newton cobble turquoise and my own strawberry velvet here is the ultimate palette where strawberry velvet comes from these are the half pan set and you you have five colors in there the chartreuse the quinacridone gold deep strawberry velvet cobalt teal i believe it was and then also green gold deep most of those colors are granulating you get two super granulating and pigment separating colors you get another two granulating colors um actually one of them is mildly granulated and then you get a beautiful smooth gorgeous vibrant chartreuse you can mix all sorts of colors very very pretty great for botanical art and all sorts of other things and um, yeah, so it's available on my website, alonacreates.com. If you go onto the online shop, did I say this already? I'm having a deja vu. Um, <laughs> I must have said it in the beginning of the video. And the colors are right here. So the chartreuse, quinacridone gold deep, and then strawberry velvet right there. And you can see how beautifully granulating and pigment separating it is. My cobalt teal has lovely amount of green in there. So it's like a beautiful, it's not green, it's not a green, but it's tipping. If you had like a blue and a green turquoisey color, this is tipping right in the middle between them two. And of course, to finish, it was the um, green gold deep, which has loads of vibrancy come through. And loads of yellow in there the next swatch we've got Daniel Smith transparent red oxide with Michael Harding's moss green interesting colors and beautiful not so much granulation in there with the moss green I find that I need to find the right paper to showcase the color and sometimes the pigment separation comes out more than other times but nonetheless i love the swatches then we have a daniel smith a sodalite a genuine with core transparent pyrrole orange now that all the colors are dry you can have a great understanding of what they actually look like with the subtle pigmentation of pigment separation there and of course we've got uh, Schmincke 
Glossier Black and Schminke Viridian and finally Schminke Glossier Turquoise and Schminke Maroon Brown. So like I mentioned briefly before the difference between the mixes above and below is that they're a bit more milky at the ones at the bottom and there's more clarity and pigment separation with the Glossier Black involved so that's something to keep in mind. I think the Glossier Turquoise milkiness kind of brought that uh, slight opacity there and kind of more butteriness uh, in texture compared to Glossier Black. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me thumbs up <laughs> and subscribe if you haven't yet. If you'd love more watercolor content, which is coming now every single Friday for the watercolor Fridays. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.